Today, I want to talk about Aptos, Sui, and Say. If you've not heard of these, basically they are what I'm going to call a Generation 2 Layer 1 blockchains. They have the benefit of coming at, you know, coming onto the scene years after Ethereum and Bitcoin and Solana and Avalanche and Polkadot and Cosmos, right? And they were able to look at a lot of these things and approve upon them with all of the developments that have occurred in this space. And I'm in the process of analyzing which are the best, if not all three, for high throughput networks. And that's really what sets, separates them, okay? Ethereum is barely pushing 300 at TPS. It's, it's probably less than that. It'll get better with its upgrade, but really Ethereum's not even at broadband levels yet. Solana's at 4,000. Aptos, Sui, and Say all claim to be above 30,000 on their test nets uh, and mainnet uh, clocked in around 12,000. So these are really fast. These are about three times faster than Solana. And if you've been on Solana, you can see how important throughput is. You can spend $10 and buy multiple NFTs on Solana because of how cheap the transaction fees are. It's pretty wild. So I found this really cool article. Chain Debrief's a great source. Um, I've read it a few times. I've, I've clicked around. I want to give you the high level uh, analysis, if you will, on this stuff. So first, all three of these, what you need to understand is that they're all layer ones. They, they are all at the same uh, point in the internet stack as Ethereum or Bitcoin, uh, Cosmos, Polkadot, you know, Avalanche, you get it, okay? There are slight differences, but all of these are proof-of-stake blockchains, okay? Um, that is their consensus model. And the main difference between them is just going to be that Aptos is using Move. That was invented in 2018 out of Facebook. And you have the standard um, proof-of-stake here, but... Say is using SD, uh, Cosmos's SDK, Software Development Kit, and its Tendermint Core for consensus, which is very interesting. So this is going to be, Say is going to be a little bit more interoperable than Sui and Aptos, but still, uh, well, I guess especially Aptos, because this is its own um, virtual machine. It, it is going to be on its own entirely, doesn't work with Ethereum or anything else. Now, they're all relatively built the same as well in terms of their token unlock schedule. Aptos is completely inflationary, so their supply is basically infiniteless over time. But the one thing I don't like about them is the fact that in all of them, they have a, a vest that is a lot of private interest, which over time suggests there's going to be sell pressure as these, you know, Series A, Series B and founders hit certain milestones on price, they're probably going to unload some bags because they've worked hard and they want to get paid. And that's the venture capitalist game, right? Either way, this stack is favored to the founders and a lot of them. Their unlock schedules are great. You know, you can see here over 50 percent, 40 something percent here, uh, north of 45 percent here. And their unlocking schedules go from you know, to date, about 2030, 2032 for all of them. And the supplies being unlocked at the rate they're unlocking is very responsible. So there's nothing alarming here, except for the fact that a lot of the founders and early innovators and contributors are holding a lot of bags, okay? Compared to Ethereum, which is much more like a public good vibe when it comes to their circulating tokens. Um, another thing to note is TVL. Okay, total value locked on chain. That's how many people put fiat into the chain and bought the tokens or playing with it in some way or another. The they're small, man. They're really small, you know. Um their their TVL is not even in the top, you know, probably 30 of, of networks right now, which means they're young, which means they have a lot of upside. And they're fully diluted market caps at a billion. But right now, since most of their tokens are locked up. Um, or in the hands of people that won't sell, for now at least, you know, it, it's it's relatively responsible. So the price could move a lot because there's not a lot of circulating tokens at the moment, and it's such a small market. There's a lot of opportunity there. 
Uh, and finally, you know, TPS means tr uh, transactions per second. This is their biggest, like, differentiating value proposition. This, this is what they are built for. And there's a lot of different use cases, right? You know, Sui's saying that they can do 297K. I know earlier I had said that they were a lot lower. In reality, you can see here, like, there's theoretical limits and actual limits. Those are the difference. Theoretically, they could do this much. No different than um, Hedera. Hedera's theoretical upper limit is around 400,000. So all of these guys really... It, you know, they're all just built in a way to optimize for throughput. That's that's their thing. And all three of these guys have serious uh, higher upper bounds or limits for what they could process, which is, again, very interesting and different than any other layer one out there. And then finally, time the time to f finality is basically how long it takes for a transaction to actually be completed. It, it gets... Uh, gets consensus from all the validating nodes, then it gets settled on the chain and it, it gets added to the ledger. That's time to finality. And it's like 12 seconds on Ethereum, 13 seconds on uh, Bitcoin. So for them to be at 480 milliseconds, Aptos is at 0.9, and then um, Say is at 0.6. Again, theoretically, this is in their test nets. They're all crazy fast. I mean, th this is a 10x improvement on what we have today. And no, not without, no surprise here, guys. The the DAUs or daily active users are really low because it's a small, small thing, and um, all of them are. They're very early in the um, you know product market fit kind of category. Um, so what does all that mean? Okay, what does it mean? Well. It means that there is a new host of layer one infrastructure being built that a lot of really smart builders can come onto and build really exciting and different kind of apps for users. Um, if you're new to the channel, you would understand, or you wouldn't know that I help you understand where things are at. Layer one infrastructure, like if this is the internet, right? It's right there then you have uh, some middleware which we cover then you have an application so an example would be board api club right that is on top of ethereum it uses a bunch of middleware okay like OpenSea for distribution of an nft as an example but essentially that's more of like an app i'm sorry it's not really middleware that's an application that you would publish your nft on but my point is there's a stack and decisions that they make right here and then there's like the internet so when you log on and you're buying and selling nfts on OpenSea, you're you're interacting with an application that sits on top of ethereum and even furthermore the nft board ab yacht club is like one little i guess page on you know, on top of that app would be a way to look at it, okay? So, Apto, Sui, Say, they're all at a much deeper level or they're further up the stack. And they allow for, they unlock a ton of functionality. Okay, when you're building an app that's only able to do, you know, uh, a few hundred transactions per second, you're really limited in what you can build. But on Aptosui, say, Hedera, these way faster throughput chains, you could build things that work with AI to do high frequency trading. You could do, I think on, on Testnet on Aptos, they did a billion or two billion transactions in one day. So they could support a lot of different users, right? Visa does 150 million a day. This second generation of infrastructure very well could power some of the largest enterprise applications in the future. I don't know when, but I'm pretty bullish on the tech. The tech is great. Um, the tokenomics are weak, but they're young, guys. They're very young, and it'll be interesting to see how they perform in this bull market. If they can take any market share from Solana, I really do feel like that's the first mover of higher throughput, kind of monolithic structured architecture and it's killing it if you haven't been paying attention so 
keep an eye out for these ones. I, I personally am watching them closely. I like them a lot. The founders are great. If you go to Logan Jastrzemski's podcast, all the founders are on there. You can listen to them. They're quite intelligent. And they're on the forefront or bleeding edge of blockchain infrastructure, which always excites me as the founder of Bleeding Edge Capital and someone that just loves tech. These guys really help me nerd out, and I appreciate all the work they're doing. Um, it's an exciting, exciting opportunity to be looking into these.